اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لسن نمبر 57 سورة النساء آئے نمبر 33 ولیکل جعلنا موالی مما ترك الوالدان والاقربون and for all meaning for all men and women for every single person جعلنا موالی we have made heirs for him for what مما ترك الوالدان والاقربون of what is left behind by the parents and the close relatives ولكل جعلنا and جعلنا we over here refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does it mean by this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fixed he has set he has appointed for every single person mawali and these mawali what do they do they inherit these heirs they inherit what do they inherit مما ترك الوالدان والأقربون of that which the parents and the relatives they leave behind the word mawali is the plural of mawla from the root letters waw, lam, ya and wala means to be close it is when two or more things come one after the other without any third thing or without any different thing between them like for instance you have students from the same class coming one after the other and between any of them there isn't a student from any other class so it is when two or more things which are of the same type they come right behind one another so what does it show? similarity as well as closeness that there is nothing coming in between so this is the literal meaning of the word wala and from this the word wala is used for friendship and the word mawla which is the singular of mawali has several meanings in the Arabic language First of all, the word mawla is used for a nasir, helper. Like we learn in the Quran, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ مَوْلَاهُ Then indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the mawla of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Jibreel, and Jibreel also, and also the righteous believers. So what's the meaning of mawla first of all? Nasir, helper. Secondly, the word mawla is also used for a close, intimate friend. It is also used for a close, intimate friend. Like for instance, we learn نعم المولى ونعم النصير Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala نعم المولى ونعم النصير If over there مولى meant نصير or nasir, then nasir would not come separately. So what does مولى mean? Also a close friend. So first of all, what does it mean? Helper. Secondly, what does it mean? Friend. Thirdly, the word mawla is also used for mu'tiq. From atiq, ayn taqaf. Mu'tiq. And mu'tiq is one who frees a slave. The emancipator of a slave. Why? Because, remember I mentioned to you earlier, the three ties of inheritance. One of them was nasab, another was marriage, and the other was Wala. So from the word wala, the word mawla is used for mu'tiq, meaning the emancipator of the slave. Fourthly, the word mawla is also used for atiq. And who is atiq? The freed slave. It's also used for the freed slave of a person. Like for instance, we learn that inna mawla al qawmi minhum. That indeed the freed slave of a people is of the people meaning he belongs to the same people even though he has been freed he will belong to the same family in the sense that he has a relationship with them which is why if the freed slave he dies and he doesn't leave behind any relatives who inherits from him his ex-master right so in al qawmi minhum and also we learn about several companions or tabi'een who were the slaves of the companions and we know that they had the name of mawla so and so then the word mawla is also used for a manager or a leader mutawallil umur meaning the one who takes charge of all the affairs the one who takes charge of all the affairs the one who manages all the affairs of someone 
So a manager, a leader, a malik, wazir, amir, leader. Basically the meaning changes depending on in what context the mawla is being used. Okay? So over here, the word mawali, what does it mean? As you know, there are several meanings of the word mawla in the Arabic language. What does it mean over here? Over here, mawla is being used for an heir. Why? Because as I mentioned to you, one of the meanings of mawla is mutawallil umur, one who manages the affairs of someone. So once a person dies, he leaves behind his estate, he leaves behind his children, he leaves behind his house, his family, his work. Correct? So who manages all of that after he's gone? The heirs. So over here, mawali, what does it mean? Heirs. So for every single person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed heirs. And these heirs, these mawali, what do they do? They inherit his wealth. They inherit his wealth. And they are from among the asaba, the close relatives, so on and so forth, as we learned earlier. Mimma from what? Taraka al-walidani wal aqrabun. What is left by the walidan and the close relatives. Now this part of the ayah has been understood in two ways. First of all, it has been understood that for each person, meaning likullin, we have made mawali. Who are the mawali? Heirs. And these heirs, what do they do? They inherit what has been left behind. What has been left behind by who? The parents and the relatives. So these heirs, they inherit what has been left by the close relatives as well as the parents. Secondly, what this means is that for each person we have made mawali, meaning heirs, for what? For what this person has left behind. For what each person has left behind. Mimma taraka. And then you pause. Who are these mawali? Al-walidan and aqrabun. Okay? In first meaning, the walidan and aqrabun, they are the ones who are leaving behind the estate. And in the second meaning, the walidan and aqrabun are the heirs of the person who has died. So it means the same thing, if you think of it. It just depends on how you look at it. And these close relatives are who? Who does the aqrabun include? The parents, the children, the spouse, and in some cases, the siblings. And in their absence, what are you going to do? Al-aqrab, fal-aqrab, fal-aqrab. Right? That depending on who the closest relative is, he or she will inherit. So what does it mean by this part of the ayah? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fixed the shares and He has also fixed the heirs. The shares as well as the heirs, they're fixed by who? By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ja'alna. And remember when the word ja'ala is used for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it gives us two meanings. That first of all, ja'ala, that He has made something in the kawni sense. Like for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, Inni ja'ilu fil ardi khalifa. I'm going to make in the earth a khalifa. What does it mean by ja'ala? Meaning I'm going to create in the kawni sense. And secondly, in the shari sense, like over here, that in law, he has appointed. In law, he has fixed. In the sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, he has fixed the shares of every single heir. And these heirs are who? Either parents or close relatives. They're not friends or they're not other people. Who are they? The relatives of a person. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ And those people who عَقَدَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ Your right hands died. Ayman is the plural of yameen. And the word yameen is used for hand, but it's also used for an oath, a pledge. And aqadat from ayn qaf dal literally means to tie a knot. And aqadat aymanukum, what does it mean by this? That your right hands have tied. Meaning, whatever promises, whatever contracts, whatever pledges that you have made. 
Because the Arabs, what they would do is that when they would make a contract, what would they do? They would either shake their hands or they would put their hands on top of each other. Like for example, the Bay'ah of Ridwan. What happened over there? All of the Sahaba, they had their hands one on top of the other. And the Prophet Wasallam, he put his hand for whose? Uthman Rabbilah. Right? So, وَالَّذِينَ عَقَدَتْ أَيْمَانِكُمْ Meaning, those people with whom you have made allies. With whom you have made pledges. Remember I mentioned to you earlier that up until the law of inheritance was given to the Muslims, what was prevalent in that society? That if a person died, who would come and take all of his wealth? The Halif. Remember, the Halif would come and take his wealth. So over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those people with whom you have made ties, meaning with whom you have made some pledge, with whom you have made some allies, these people, فَآتُوهُمْ نَصِيبَهُمْ Then give them their share. What is the share of these people? It is said that earlier, meaning at the beginning, the share of these people was one-sixth initially. It was a nasib. Because all of a sudden if a halif didn't get anything, that was something very difficult. And remember, all of the commands they were given gradually, one after the other. So initially, their share was one-sixth. But later on, this ayah was abrogated by the ayah of miras. This ayah was abrogated by the ayah of miras, in which no share was given to who? To the halif. But does it mean that somebody with whom you have really good friendship with, very close ties with, they're not your relatives, they don't inherit anything? Or just imagine the mutabanna, the adopted son. They have lived with you all their life. There's no relationship, meaning there's no kinship. Similar, there was no rada'a. So for them even, no kind of share. So what do we learn? That what's their nasib then? That a person can do wasiya for them. So then, how do we understand nasibahum, their share? Their share refers to the maximum one third that a person can do wasiya in their favor. So there's basically two ways of looking at this ayah. First of all, if you take the opinion that this is abrogated, how do you understand this? By the ayah of miras. And secondly, even if it is abrogated, what do you understand by nasib? That nasib is what? The friend, what the halif left behind as wasiyah, which is maximum up to one third. This part of the ayah has also been understood in another way. That, وَالَّذِينَ عَقَدَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ It doesn't refer to the hulafa, the halif, or the mutabanna. But rather, it refers to the ukhuwa, the brotherhood that was established between who? The muhajireen and the ansar. Ibn Abbas anhu said that when the muhajireen came to Medina, the muhajir would inherit from the ansari. The muhajir, he would inherit from the ansari because of the bond of brotherhood which the Prophet wasallam established between them. But this was later abrogated by other parts of the Qur'an as well. So one was by the ayah of Mirath and also from other parts of the Qur'an as well, this was abrogated. That وَأُولُوا الْأَرْحَامِ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْضُ That the close relatives, they are more deserving, they are more worthy. So وَالَّذِينَ عَقَدَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ فَآتُوهُمْ نَصِيبَهُمْ So give them their share. Others have said that وَالَّذِينَ عَقَدَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ what it refers to is the women, meaning the wife of a person. Because these women as well, a person has made an aqt. Right? It's uqtatun nikah. Aqtun nikah. So for these women, give them their share. Because up until now, the women were not given their shares. So give them their share. فَآتُوهُمْ نَصِيبَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدًا Indeed, Allah is ever, over everything, a witness. Meaning, He witnesses everything, including including what? The division of the estate and the distribution of the shares. That is 
a worthy heir is he given his share or not inna allah kana ala kulli shay'in shahida and this is a warning that is being given to people what warning that you better give everybody their deserving shares so what do we learn from this ayah that first of all allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fixed the heirs and he has also fixed the shares so we do not have the authority to change the law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because likullin ja'alna allah has appointed and therefore anybody's estate should be divided according to what according to the law that allah has given not according to our culture that just because the oldest son is the one who has done the most therefore he would inherit everything and the daughters they are living in somebody else's house now so why should they deserve no allah has fixed the shares therefore we cannot alter the law of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also we learn from this ayah that if a person has done wasiya in favor of a friend in favor of someone who is not an heir then what should be done what should be done that portion should be given because sometimes the deceased before he dies what does he do he specifies that so and so of my property should be given to such and such person or such and such masjid or so and so cause and what happens what do the relatives do afterwards they hide that will they hide that wasiya they pretend as if it doesn't exist what does allah say fa'atuhum nasibahum give them their share and also we learn from this ayah about the obligation of fulfilling promises that if a promise has been made if a wasiya is given if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid a responsibility and if a person does not fulfill that promise does not carry out that responsibility then what should he remember that allah is a witness over my actions inna allah kana ala kulli shay'in shahida